Moscow will hold service. Among the numerous foreign guests who were present at the opening of the 27th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party in Moscow on Tuesday was the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Great Britain, Gordon McLennan. Alexander Barabichuk met him and asked to share his impressions of the political report made by the General Secretary of the Soviet Communist Party, Mikhail Gorbachev. Gordon, speaking about the first day of this Congress in Moscow, what were your impressions? Well, my impression is that this Congress will unquestionably carry forward the recent initiatives from the Soviet government and the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in relation to foreign policy, in relation to internal affairs and internal policy in the Soviet Union, and that there will be a complete development of the initiatives in the days that lie ahead. Because this is the case arising from the first day of the Congress, I find it very exciting, very inspiring, and I am confident that this Congress can mean a very great deal for humanity and for the Soviet people and indeed all the people of the world. Well, of course, the crucial problem of today is that of war and peace. Uh, what was said about disarmament in the speech of General Secretary Gorbachev? How do you see the implications for Britain here, perhaps? Well, I think Comrade Gorbachev was very clear, very specific in relation to the questions of peace and disarmament. I'd like to pick out two points that he made. One, that he said there was an appreciation of the first summit in Geneva some months ago, but in looking forward to a second summit, he said that there needs to be concrete results from this summit, otherwise the people of the world might feel that the summits are not producing anything of value in relation to peace and disarmament. And he said that he considered that there were two possibilities of practical results from the next summit. One was the ending of nuclear tests, that is a continuation of the present moratorium that the Soviet Union unilaterally has uh, placed on nuclear weapon tests to be joined by the United States and other nuclear powers, that that could be a first step in practical achievements of the next summit. And secondly, the reduction and indeed possible removal of intermediate ballistic missiles from the continent of Europe. And Kamil Gorbachev, I thought, made a very interesting proposition indeed, especially in, in reply to those who consider that the two super nuclear powers, as it were, are only concerned to have discussions between each other. He said, well, why not the five nuclear powers in the world? should sit round the table and discuss how to rid the world of nuclear weapons. Or indeed, why should not the members of the Security Council of the United Nations sit round the table and discuss how to find a way to disarm them? And so it seemed to me that in these uh, points he made in his report, Comrade Gorbachev is again advancing very concrete, specific proposals for the elimination of nuclear weapons from the world. And here I was particularly struck where he emphasised time and time again that we are at a turning point. There is no alternative to the policies of peace and disarmament, that the nightmare of nuclear war must be taken away from the horizons of humanity. And in this I have absolutely no doubt that Comrade Gorbachev was reflecting the feelings and aspirations of hundreds of millions, indeed thousands of millions of people throughout the world, including the millions of people in Great Britain who want to see peace and disarmament. And therefore I consider that this continuation of the positive assertion of the Soviet Union in terms of ridding the world of nuclear weapons and seeking measures of disarmament not only in relation to nuclear weapons but in relation to all weapons and armed forces meets with the very great needs and feelings of the British people not only in relation to security but in relation to lifting the huge and heavy burden of armaments off the people of our country. But of course, Gordon, uh, critical, of critical importance are the state of Soviet-American relations at present. How did you see the gist of Comrade Gorbachev's argumentation on this problem? Well, I think again Comrade Gorbachev was very clear and very specific and very practical. For example, he said that while he considered that a group of right-wing thinking politicians had taken over control in the United States in recent years, that even in this section of politicians in the United States of America, there was a more realistic approach of facing up to the realities of the situation. And he emphasized time and time again that the proposals being put forward for nuclear disarmament and ridding the world of the nuclear nightmare was in accordance with the wishes of the American people. And that was very important indeed in his opinion. 
And therefore, I think he showed in relation to the United States of America and the policies of the ruling group in the United States of America that he considers that even there, there is a beginning of a recognition of the realities of the international situation and that if they continued with their acceleration of the arms race, it would bring them increasingly into conflict, not only with the peoples of the United States who wish peace and disarmament, but indeed some of their allies in Western Europe and elsewhere in the world. In saying these points, Comrade Gorbachev did not for a moment draw by on his basic criticisms of American imperialism and its role in the world, of its exploitation of the developing countries and of its tendency to try and enforce its views by the force of arms and by uh, unnecessary and uh, undemocratic pressures. But while equating these developments with imperialism and making it absolutely clear that he considered imperialism was responsible for the danger of war which hangs over humanity, nevertheless the preparedness to deal in a practical and statesmanlike manner with the imperialists and especially the United States of America in order to find a way forward for humanity. Well, of course, another problem of contention in the Western world at present is that of uh, militarization of space, uh, whether we should go into space with arms. And uh, this is a major hurdle on the way to disarmament. What is the position of the British Communist Party on this problem? Well, our position is, uh, I think, the same as all sane-thinking people in our own country and throughout the world, except those who are insane in terms of their wish to dominate the world and indeed to dominate space with nuclear weapons. We consider, like all sensible thinking people, that to accelerate the arms race into space is an absolutely impermissible development as far as nuclear weapons is concerned. The peaceful exploration of space, that is the issue, as Comrade Gorbachev indeed put it in his report. What we want is the peaceful exploration of space for the benefit of humanity, for the benefit of future generations, and are totally opposed to the militarization of space. And I believe in saying this, we not only speak for communists in Britain, we speak for the overwhelming majority of the population in Britain and in the world, and we must make our views clear about that so that this acceleration of the arms race into space does not take place because if it does, then indeed it is a very major road, step on the road towards disaster for humanity. Comrade Gorbachev dedicated much of his time to dealing with domestic problems here in the Soviet Union, and he has made uh, principal statements about the Soviet economy and strengthening of the, so of the socialist democracy. How did you see that? Well, he made it very clear indeed that there had been problems in the development of the Soviet economy in the recent years, that in terms of social and human development, these had been uh, unnecessarily delayed, not only by objective conditions, but I think indeed, Comrade Gorbachev said, that the major factor here had been subjective conditions. And throughout his speech, he was very strong indeed on the need to overcome inertia, the need to overcome bureaucracy, and he made it absolutely clear that this had to be ended, that the inertia and bureaucracy had to be overcome, and there had to be what he called an acceleration of social and economic production and development. And he then argued in a very effective way indeed that this acceleration of social and economic production could only be overcome by a big development of social socialist democracy, where he called, I think, for personal involvement of every Soviet citizen in the democratic process, that there must be a great new renovation of democracy, of what he called personal self-government, of where every plant and every workshop and every region and every part of the Soviet Union had to play its part in developing its own uh, part in the development of Soviet economy related to the national and overall Soviet situation. But he emphasized that there had been too much centralism. There needed to be new initiatives at plant, at district, at regional and at national level, all contributing to, within the limits of the central planning, the overall and positive development of the Soviet Union. I had the very strong impression here that there is going to be a very important, even dramatic development in this sphere of the work of the Soviet Union, all related to fulfilling the needs and aspirations, the well-being of the Soviet people. But Gordon, perhaps you'll agree that all this criticism wasn't meant to diminish what we have already achieved. And, uh, of course, uh, how did you take his statement that in the nearest 15 years, that is in the period by the end of the century, 
we are going to double our economic potential. This, of course, is absolutely wrong to view these criticisms that Cameron Gorbachev is making as if he was saying that there was something fundamentally wrong with the socialist system of society. On the contrary, he opened his report right at the beginning by noting the dramatic and great achievements of the Soviet people and the Soviet Union in relation to the transformation of the economy and all the other aspects of Soviet society. And he emphasized that the process of history is irreversible, that socialism is going to make a major contribution in the development of history, and that the doubling of the living standards and well-being of the Soviet people between now and the end of the century was entirely possible, and they were setting the same from this Congress. And therefore he was in a confident, while critical mood, he was in a confident mood, based on his confidence in the people of the Soviet Union and in the Soviet Communist Party to deal with any inadequacies, indeed any violation of socialist legality, of, of socialist norms of behaviour, and produce the kind of results that this Congress is demanding and that the people of the Soviet Union are obviously wanting to have. Well, speaking about the general message of the first day of the Congress, what was it for you personally? Well, for me personally, and I've been at a number of Congresses of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, it was confirmation of the peace policy of the Soviet Union, confirmation of the recognition here by the Soviet people and Soviet government that there is no greater question facing humanity anywhere in the world than the ruling out of nuclear war. Confirmation that the ruling out of nuclear war is not just a question of preventing a holocaust and the nightmare of nuclear war for humanity, but the direction of these resources at present spent on military weapons and in the production of these uh, weapons of mass destruction for the well-being of the people. That socialism in the Soviet Union has great achievements and these are going to be consolidated and advanced in the years that lie ahead. Confirmation of the strength of the Communist Party here in the Soviet Union and Communist parties throughout the world and the recognition by Comrade Gorbachev in his report that in the capitalist countries such as Britain where I come from that the communist parties are faced with great new tasks arising from great new developments including the differences in the social composition of the working class and the challenges facing the communist party in these capitalist countries demands new thinking, creative thinking, initiatives and bold actions by the communist parties in these countries in order to face up to the challenge of our times. And therefore, I see this Congress as being a very important one for the Soviet people, but also very important for all communist parties and national liberation movements throughout the world, but for all humanity that want peace and disarmament, social progress, and the solving of the great problems facing the people of the world, I see this Congress as being a very encouraging and important one for them as well as for communists. General Secretary of the Communist Party of Great Britain, Gordon McLennan, answering questions by Alexander Barabichik about the first day of the work of the 27th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party and the political report made by General Secretary Mikhail Gorbachev.